As unexpected cultural phenomena go, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have got to top the charts. After conquering comics and cartoons, their meteoric rise culminated in a live-action motion picture trilogy that was an unprecedented success. So what became of the actors who shell-shocked the world? I'd like to invite you all in, but, uh, I really don't have anything to offer you guys except for, a uh, frozen pizza. Let's go for it! Donatello was voiced by 80s child star and contemporary wizard of peculiarity, Corey Feldman. If you haven't kept up with Feldman the last few years, keep your arms and legs inside the car because this gets turbulent. The Turtles franchise marked a sort of turning point for Feldman. The days of leading roles were fading into the middle distance. Gremlins and Goonies were pretty well behind him. Direct-to-video Lost Boy sequels would be his only constant companions. There's a nightcrawler who's created a new designer drug. The only problem is it's not a drug. It's vampire blood. Unfortunately, this also came at the tail end of a contentious legal battle with his parents, who apparently spent everything the actor made before he was emancipated at age 15. The 90s unfortunately seemed to hit Feldman like a train. His first marriage dissolved when he was 22, and his career took a hard slide. Lately, Feldman has been mostly associated with his often bizarre shots at starting a third-act music career, as well as his support for child sex abuse advocacy groups. Some of his more recent acting work has been a return to the Well of Ooze. He provided the voice of Slash on the 2013 animated Ninja Turtles series. Adolescence is hard on most people and especially difficult for reptilian genetic abominations. Hence, Raphael. Why? Why? Oh, I don't know. Because I wanted to redecorate. You know, a couple throw pillows, a TV news reporter. What do you think? The turtle's moody, red-clad brother was played by character actor Josh Pice, who gets extra points for not only performing the voice of Raph, but also doing the bodywork inside of the 70-pound turtle costume, making him the only one of the lead performers to do both. Even if you're not familiar with his name, you've probably seen Pice's face. The hard-working actor has more than 90 acting credits to his name. Some of his more recognizable roles have been multi-episode arcs on both Law & Order and Law & Order SUU, his time as Stu Feldman on Ray Donovan and his difficult-to-forget turn as the ill-fated gynecologist in the 2007 horror film Teeth. Ugh. Where did they come up with this stuff? Lately, Pice has been working as the founder and lead instructor of the Committed Impulse Acting Schools in New York and Los Angeles. Michelangelo, comic relief, pizza aficionado, and masterful wielder of nunchucks. Mikey was voiced by child actor Robbie Rist in the 1990 motion picture. Nice night. Mm-hmm. Pizza dude's got 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. A lot of Rist's career has been spent as sort of a pop culture curse. He was hired on as Cousin Oliver for what wound up being the last season of The Brady Bunch, played Booger in the ill-fated Revenge of the Nerds TV show, which was canceled before airing, and voiced Rocky in the Blues Brothers animated series, which was also canceled before airing. Luckily, recent years have been kinder to the 54-year-old Rist. His voice acting career has taken off, and he now has almost 150 credits to his name. You might know his voice from Doc McStuffin, where he plays Stuffy, or from the 2013 Ninja Turtles series in which he portrays Mondo Gecko. Even better, Rist was intrinsic to the creation of the Sharknado series, in which he not only played Robbie the bus driver, but also wrote the theme music. Speaking of Revenge of the Nerds, did you know that Takashi played the voice of Leonardo? Brian Tochi, born Brian Tochihara, got his start in acting at a young age. One of his first credits was on an episode of the original Star Trek series, where he played a member of a group of killer children with an ice cream obsession. It made him a natural fit for the role of Leonardo in a member of a group of killer teenagers with a pizza obsession. As with a few other Turtles alums, he's plenty active on the convention circuit, meeting up with fans and signing autographs like a champ. Maybe somebody ought to tell him that we're the good guys. Yeah. Any thoughts? I've only got one thought. This guy knows where Splinter is. Kevin Clash was the voice actor and lead puppeteer behind Splinter, the turtle's giant rodent mentor. For more than 30 years, he was the voice and hands behind iconic Sesame Street characters like Hoots the Owl and small red tickle enthusiast Elmo. His work even inspired a documentary about his life, 2011's Being Elmo, A Puppeteer's Life. A 
quick glance at the actor's credits over the last few years shows an uncharacteristic gap between jobs, and the reason is kind of a giant bummer. Starting in 2012, some pretty nasty allegations against Clash began popping up. Two men came forward, accusing Clash of sexual misconduct. The first accuser recanted, and all other cases were thrown out, but the damage was done. Clash resigned from his work on Sesame Street and only returned to the Muppet life recently, working on Brian Henson's 2018 adult puppet comedy The Happy Time Murders. It's not easy to be cool. It's even harder to be cool compared to a quartet of martial arts cowabunga monsters that are standing right next to you. Yet somehow, Casey Jones always pulls it off. Oh, you guys mind telling me what you're doing, my little green pal over there? Hmm? Oh, who is the babe? In 1990's Ninja Turtles, Jones is played by Canadian actor Elias Codius. Codius had a hot streak in the 80s and 90s, landing plenty of roles, including his two best-known performances as Casey Jones in the first and third Turtles pictures and as Thomas Daggett, the lead in the first Prophecy movie. Codius's star faded somewhat during the new millennium, but he still works pretty regularly. Recently, he had a stellar run on NBC's Chicago franchise of programs playing undercover detective Alvin Olinsky on Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago Med, and the short-lived, ugly step-sibling of the bunch, Chicago Justice. In the pantheon of fiction, there are supporting characters who become as necessary as the protagonists themselves. Luke needed R2 to talk to machines, Will Turner needed Jack Sparrow to keep the franchise running a decade past its sell-by date, and the Turtles? The Turtles needed April, presumably because she had a job and was willing to shell out the money for pizza every night of the week. It is really quite simple, Miss O'Neill. And he knows my name. Perfect. In the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie, April was played by American actress Judith Hogue. A relative unknown at the time, Hogue was reportedly less than thrilled with the direction of the first film, and she's acknowledged that her personal gripes may have been what led her to never being approached to join the sequel. You can't keep a good reporter down, though. Hogue has gone on to maintain a healthy acting career with more than 100 credits over 30-plus years. Recently, she had a recurring role on NBC's reboot of Nashville, playing Tandy Hampton. Even so, April remains probably her best-known role, with Hogue admitting that she's still recognized for the part three or four times a week. April O'Neil has had a fascinating life. Starting out as a computer programmer in the comics, she's gone on to work as a reporter, a vigilante, and, surprise, the fifth Ninja Turtle. With such a wide range of ever-changing vocations, it only makes sense that her face would change, too. When it came time for the inevitable sequel to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the producers decided to go with a new actress to play April O'Neil. This time, they went with Paige Turco, an actress who'd been working on soap operas like All My Children and Guiding Light up to that point. Turco managed to hold on to the part for both the second movie, Secret of the Ooze, and the third one, Turtles in Time. Since then, Turco has had a successful career in television. She had a season-long run on NYPD Blue back in the 90s, playing Officer Abby Sullivan, as well as an 18-episode stint on Party of Five. You can most recently catch her on CW's The 100 as Dr. Abigail Griffin. Toka and Razar may not have been the most well-received characters in the Turtles mythos, with most fans responding to the presence with a resolute, where's Bebop and Rocksteady? Even so, the performer behind them is a powerhouse. Frank Welker is a pop culture panzer tank who's been tearing through your childhood memories for decades without you even knowing it. His filmography is so long it has its own Wikipedia page. No, we're not exaggerating. God help you if you try to load the 72-year-old voice actor's IMDb page. It takes up more bandwidth than Netflix. Welker got his start playing Fred on Scooby-Doo way back in 1969. Not content to simply play one iconic character, he went on to voice Brain, Claw, and the Cat on Expector Gadget, over 20 different Transformers, Slimer and Ray in The Real Ghostbusters, Santa's Little Helper on The Simpsons, Nibbler on Futurama, a whole pile of Animaniacs, Abu, Raja, and The Cave of Wonders in Aladdin, and, no kidding, over 800 other roles. And believe it or not, I was Smokey the Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. Extra crazy, he's still playing Fred on Scooby-Doo after five decades. That's what you call being committed to your work. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.